Good morning, everyone, or actually good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the September 24th presentation of our ongoing series, Improving Patient Experience in Virginia Hospitals and Health System as part of our 2020 Year of Patient Experience celebration across the Commonwealth sponsored by the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association. My name is Abraham Segris. I'm the Vice President for Quality and Patient Safety here at the Association, and we're very glad to have all of you all with us this morning. Um, just a quick review of our housekeeping notes. Um, the webinar is being recorded this morning. Um, all participants are in listen-only mode. If you'd like to ask questions of our presenters today, we ask that you enter those um, questions in the question box in the control panel, and we will review those at the end of the presentation. Um, the slides for this morning are not available in the handout section, but we will make them available on our website following the presentation. And at the conclusion of the webinar, a feedback survey will launch requesting your, um, your evaluation of today's presentation. Um, so today's agenda, we're very glad to have with us our colleagues from Sheltering Arms, um, led by Mr. Alan Lombardo, the Chief Executive Officer, and then our colleague Carrie Brady will also be with us. Um, just a reminder of who we are, we are the Virginia Healthcare and Hospital and Healthcare Association, um, an alliance of hospitals and health delivery systems across Virginia, and our vision is that through the power of collaboration, the association will be the recognized driving force behind making Virginia the healthiest state in the nation. Listed on your screen are the member hospitals and health systems um, that make up the VHHA from our colleagues up in Augusta um, in, in beautiful Shenandoah Valley up to Northern Virginia and Inova Health System to the Lake Taylor Transitional Care Hospital in the eastern part of the state and um, our friends here in, in VCU and all the hospitals and health systems across the Commonwealth. So as I indicated earlier, this is the year of patient experience as declared by the VHHA Board of Directors. And the goals that we're trying to accomplish throughout this year is to one, identify and celebrate the efforts by Virginia hospitals and health systems to improve the patient's experience of care. To continue to link and integrate patient experience improvement efforts with broader quality and patient safety improvement efforts to facilitate connections between Virginia hospitals uh, for the purposes of shared learning, and then finally, to improve Virginia hospitals' individual and aggregate performance on national patient experience measures. So without further ado, I'm actually going to turn the presentation over to Mr. Alan Lombardo. Um, and Alan, I really apologize. I left the O off the end of your name. I just recognized that. Um, so my apologies for that um, typo on the, on the screen. I will go ahead and give you the right to um, control the slides and proceed with your presentation. Thank you very much for being with us, you and your, your team. Thank you, Abraham. I'll, I'll take that as a subtle hint to keep the presentation short, right? That, that's that's <laughs> I really appreciate the opportunity. I want to thank Sean and Abraham, the entire leadership team at VHHA, uh, the opportunity today to share part of Sheltering Arms Institute's story with the rest of the Virginia Hospitals and Healthcare Associations uh, is really an honor for us. I'd like to spend one minute and just introduce uh, uh, the co-presenters that I have here today. So Mac McElroy is the president of Sheltering Arms Foundation, honored to have him here with us. In addition to Matt Wilkes, who's the Chief Rehabilitation Officer uh, for Sheltering Arms Institute. And I, I specifically asked Mac and Matt to join me today because I'm going to talk a little bit about the design process for Sheltering Arms Institute. And while I came on, fortunate, or lucky for me, I came on after these two gentlemen and a whole bunch of other very smart folks designed the Institute. Um, they can really give some context to that process. So, so I'll lead the presentation, but I'm gonna ask these gentlemen to jump in and share their thoughts as we go along. All right, let me see if I can advance the slides here. All right, so just the first slide, intro slide. Again, I wanna thank Abraham. It's really great. Uh, I feel grateful to be part of the patient experience, the year of patient experience uh, for VHHA. 
and appreciate the time to share share our story on how we designed uh, SAI for patient for optimal patient and staff experience. So we had a few objectives uh, for this presentation. So again, new hospital designed for optimal patient, family, and staff experience. The family piece we we opened in June. So as you're all aware, with COVID, the family piece has been a little hard to evaluate to this point, um, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Objective number two is to describe how to apply concepts of onstage, offstage in healthcare. So this is something that when Abraham and Sean came to the Institute, they, they were interested in hearing more about. So we'll talk a little bit about, those are familiar with kind of the Disney concept, concepts of onstage, offstage, and how we implemented those concepts in the new design. And then really the probably the most important piece is describing the benefit of having staff, patients, and families involved in the hospital design process and how we feel at the Institute that correlates to patient outcomes. So hopefully we'll achieve all three of those objectives here this afternoon. So a very quick slide on who we are. So Sheltering Arms Institute is a joint venture between Sheltering Arms Corporation and VCU Health System. Uh, what are we? We're brand new. I think the newest hospital in Virginia, unless anyone else out there is open since uh, June 13th, but we're a brand new 114 bed post acute care inpatient rehab hospital and really consolidated the, the beds that were previously part of Sheltering Arms and VCU Health's PM&R department. Uh, so three previous sites uh, combined into one. The definitive agreement for, for this joint venture was signed in May of 2016, just to give you a little historical reference. Uh, groundbreaking for the Institute was in May 2018, and then we opened the doors to our very first patients in the midst of the pandemic on uh, June 13, 2020. So we've been open now for a little bit over, a little bit over 90 days. So a few um, just broad features about the building and campus itself, just to give you a frame of reference as we go through some of the details, but we are on a 46 acre campus and we are located just west of Short Pump on the inside the eastern edge of, of Goochland County. Um, we do have 114 uh, very spacious private patient rooms, all with their, their own bathroom. We host probably the largest amount of high-tech rehab gym space in the Commonwealth. So we have over 10,000 square feet of high-tech rehabilitation gym space. And we'll talk about a little bit in detail going to some of that. We have dedicated, as I mentioned, onstage and offstage space and dedicated space for families, patients, and staff. And really one of the goals, it was to design space that's truly dedicated to the clinical care and recovery of patients and their families as they go through the process. We designed the facility and you'll see in some of the pictures with to maximize natural light and really optimize that healing environment. And you, you can see the picture on this slide in the upper right hand corner is a picture of our main therapy gym and a, along the wall on the left hand Part of the slide shows all the uh, floor to ceiling windows allowing natural light into, into the rehab space. So let's talk a little bit about the SAI design process and, and how, that, how that went. And again, this is, this is the part where uh, Mac and Matt may jump in because this occurred before I, before I joined the organization. But I really think one of the best parts of this process was the stakeholder engagement. So there were over 150 uh, members of the sheltering arms and VCU teams to include board members and current and former patients and family members who were all part of the design process. And that really comprised 28, um, what we call 28 hospital user groups. And you can see those groups in the lower right hand corner of the slide. And those groups participated in over 200 meetings over a 15 month period. And, and you can see we're putting the time frames in there, you know, the number of meetings, the number of people, the number of hours, really to emphasize the fact that this is a big investment, that, that the more you invest in this design process and the more stakeholder input you have, the better off your design, the better off the results will be in your design. Um, also spent many, many hours in talking to the team working on the patient rooms. So we had mock-ups of, of the rooms, there were workshops dedicated to patient rooms um, and dedicated to the main rehab gym space and how that was gonna be laid out. 
So a lot of investment in the design of the patient rooms and of the rehab space for the Institute. You see the picture on this slide is uh, two of our most famous um, stakeholders for the organization combined, I think have over 80 years of volunteer service to the organization. So meeting with them, getting their input and feedback on what they'd like to see um, in Sheltering Arms Institute. Also wanna point out those groups there highlighted in purple uh, are the groups that consisted current and former patients and family members. And we also included donors. I think that's an important stakeholder group that I did not mention. Those groups in purple really involved um, those key stakeholders from the community and allowed us to design this hospital uh, with really the community in mind. So uh, other than stakeholder engagement, I think the next important piece to talk about is leadership engagement. So how as a leadership team were we kept apprised of the process and how did we align the strategic goals for the design of Sheltering Arms Institute to ensure that those, that those work groups produced a result that, that really produced um, the most effective utilization of the space and the most effective utilization of our resources to deliver uh, optimal, optimal hospital experience for our patients and staff. So we had really two big committees, steering committee and our owner um, architect construction committee, the OAC committee, which really guided the process from a high level um, and really guided the design and construction process to ensure that we delivered optimal results. Alan, can, can I interject one point um, here? I think it's important for the audience to know that the average length of stay at Sheltering Arms and at VCU uh, rehab unit is much longer than um, you would typically see amongst our acute care partners. So it's about two weeks. So we had to be very thoughtful and actually take cues from the hospitality industry as we thought about designing that in the environment. So I just wanted to mention that, that length of stay. And then the, the second point related to that um, was a phrase that we actually learned from a patient family member. And she said to us, yes, I know you're licensed as a hospital, but we really think of this place as a place between hospital and home. And so, so much of what went into the design was, was following that theme around progress and recovery and healing. And I just wanted to chip those points in. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. Go ahead, Matt. Did you have something else to say? Yeah. Well, first, I just wanted to say that the slide in the bottom right there, I still remember how cold that warehouse was. Uh, I think I think that was uh, February with no heat on. So, uh, you know, compliments to all of the people that uh, participated in that event. I think what we're seeing really is now that we have the facility up and running and so many comments about how the facility works well practically. And it has a lot to do with the fact that the team including all the community members um, and, uh, you know, participant vendors, all, all of their hard work over a number of months really resulted in a, a fantastic facility. Thanks, Matt. All right, so looking at the actual design, so talking about Sheltering Arms Institute and what, what are the design features that really speak to patient experience. So this concept of onstage versus offstage design in healthcare is something that very early on in the process was implemented into the design of the Institute. So when you look at the hospital itself, this picture in the upper right-hand corner is a picture of our dedicated patient entrance. So um, you can see there our friends from Goochland County Fire and Rescue. But when patients come to the Institute, they have a dedicated entrance. And really this entrance uh, speaks to the fact that we want to preserve the dignity and respect for all of our patients so that they're not so when we bring them into the hospital and we get them up to their room, we really want to protect that environment for them and make sure um, that we get them to their room in a way that, that really respects their dignity as a patient. So I think having this dedicated entrance for patients really speaks to that. So we consider this kind of an offstage area, an area where we try to we try to restrict uh, we try to restrict access and keep it keep it preserved for our patients. 
And then if you can, and I know this is a busy slide, so I'll talk through this a little a little slower, but when we think about on stage and you flip the building around and look at the main visitor entrance uh, kind of to the front face of the building, it's a very open um, space. So again, lots of floor to ceiling windows, lots of natural light, wide open space. And the picture there in the lower left corner is the picture of our main lobby. So when folks come in, again, it, it's a very warm and welcoming environment. And that's really where we want our visitors. And, you know, someday we'll hopefully be fully open to many more visitors. But uh, right now, this is where this is where our family members who are approved for visitations enter the building. So, again, we consider that really an onstage space. Um, and then in the upper right hand, hand corner of this slide, I kind of take you in the building. Um, so from that offstage patient entrance space, patients come into the building and then those arrows really direct you to where they would get to the dedicated patient service elevator. So the patient, patients have dedicated elevator to get them up to their room again to try to do that in a way that that really honors and respects their dignity and privacy and that part of the building is secured off so there are no other visitors uh, walking through that area it's just staff and patients if we take that concept of on stage off stage a little bit further uh, you look at our patient units, so this is one of our patient units as we move up to the either the second or third floor, they're mirror images, but on the, on the floor itself, there's an offstage corridor that connects to the service elevators in the, in the center of the building, and it really allows us to do all the logistical offstage work, so for transporting linens or food or um, trash, we can do that in a way that that's part of the offstage work that we do. So you can see that offstage corridor that goes directly through the core of the unit and again allows, allows our um, service personnel to do their work in a way that's efficient but also um, shielded from patients, families, visitors. And then this really opens up the onstage corridor. So you can see the onstage corridor highlighted in orange there. And really that space is dedicated for therapy, right? So we view our hospital as a therapeutic tool to deliver the best, the best care for our patients leading to optimal outcomes. So that onstage corridor really allows us to live, deliver therapy, um, nursing care, medical care in that space. And also a space obviously for family members and visitors. In terms of the, just to jump in real quickly again, in terms of the patient experience, one of the things that this design theme that Alan has just gone through in the last couple of slides has helped to produce is extremely quiet and restful units. Um, so all the activity that needs to happen is purposeful. A lot of the sort of the distracting sounds, et cetera, um, are, are really absent on the unit. So it's, you know, the executive team as we've done rounding over uh you know the initial months from startup i think we routinely remark how quiet the brain injury unit is or how quiet you know the xyz unit is so that's uh it's been really nice to see that design philosophy result in uh, something that's meaningful for a patient experience we're also cautious too so all the nurses out there we're also cautious not to say the q word in front of our nurses but it makes them a little nervous but yeah it, it, it's it's by far the quietest hospital i've ever been in or worked in and i think part of that goes to the design of 114 private rooms it really makes the units a little bit larger and i think that that adds to the kind of that um to keeping the noise down on each unit which is nice so now we're going to look at the influence of having patients family and staff on your design process. Shockingly, right, when you include patients, staff, and family members in your design, you end up designing a hospital for patients, families, and staff members, right? So that's, that's probably not surprising. But I'll highlight the staff member experience just for a minute here. So we do have six staff break rooms, and that picture on the lower right-hand corner of the slide deck you can see all the window, having windows alone for a staff break room is a nice feature. Um, so we have windows, uh, we have refrigerators, microwaves, all the things, coffee, coffee makers, you know, everything that staff want and need in a break area. Um, and having six dedicated break rooms for them really is a nice touch. It's a nice way to really show them uh, how, much, how much their work means to us in this environment. 
Uh, free parking, yeah, that, that's the little things, right? Having free and abundant parking is probably no small thing, actually, to staff. So it's great to be able to offer those type of features um, to, to a facility design. And I would think the, uh, the other important thing that our staff are really excited about is we made a significant and conscious investment in clinical technology to support um, evidence-based clinical care. We won't have time to go through all of it today, but I'll touch on a few things that we were strategic about. So move, moving on to space is really dedicated to patients and families. Um, again, I talked about the fact that we have over 10,000 square feet of dedicated high-tech gym space. Um, the picture in the upper left-hand corner was still during, uh, was pr prior to opening. That, that's our brain, our dedicated brain injury satellite gym. Uh, more equipment in there today than when this picture was taken. Um, the other thing I'll point out, as you can see in the left, left part of that picture, there's a patient in the hallway using a body weight support system. So we also, in talking about having therapy on the units, we're also able to offer therapy to patients on the unit. So we have dedicated body weight support systems on all four of our inpatient rehab units, which is fairly unique in the rehab and hospital environment. So it was a way for us to differentiate ourselves. Dedicated family slash visitor rooms on each unit. So the picture in the bottom left-hand corner of your slide is one of those dedicated family rooms, which we have on each unit. Again, this was based on feedback we received from, from prior patients and family members about having dedicated space outside of the patient room, truly dedicated for them where they can go have some downtime um, or visit with a patient or loved one. And then on the upper, kind of in the middle of the slide, there's our activity of daily living suites, our ADL suite. And again, to utilize technology to, to really uh, propel our patient outcomes, we put a body weight support system that goes from our main gym all the way into our ADL suite so that we can integrate that uh, walking or ambulation training into functional tasks. So at SAI, you know, our philosophy really is the best patient experience is optimal patient outcomes. So a lot of what we do at SAI, in addition to Mac mentioned, I think a very important point on length of stay, we did take a lot of things from the hospitality industry and kind of infuse them into the healthcare environment to ensure kind of the softer side of patient experience is something that folks really appreciated. But ultimately, we want great patient outcomes. So we integrate technology into about every space in this hospital. And it's truly to do two things. One is to engage patients, and, and they're not mutually exclusive. Engaging patients in rehab really does help drive clinical outcomes. So Matt's really the mastermind behind a lot of this, but we utilize technology, integrate that into our clinical practice guidelines, and it, we really have seen over previous uh, generations at Sheltering Arms and now at the Institute, uh, superior clinical outcomes from, from doing that. The other thing I'll mention about engaging patients is the fact that, you know, much of our technology in our main gym really has virtual reality and gaming components to it. So it really is highly engaging both for staff and patients. And then in our main, our main gym, I talk about some of the technology there as well. Patients get really excited about using this technology to help propel their out, you know, to help to help improve their outcomes because a lot of it's competitive. You know, they they spend so many minutes or do so many repetitions on some of this equipment. They always want to improve that. And we're able to track that over time by utilizing this equipment. Those are three pictures of our main rehab gym there. All right, I want to get to the patient rooms uh, quickly. I know we only have a few minutes left, but there was a lot of time in our design process spent on patient rooms. Uh, we know this is a big either point of satisfaction or dissatisfaction among patients. You can see the picture here. One of the, one of the best things about our patient rooms, I think, is the windows. We have a ton of natural light um, if patients want it uh, coming in their rooms. Um, we also design each each hospital room is about 235 square feet. Uh, again, all have their own private bathrooms. We've designed the hospital also to have lift systems in almost every patient room. We're able to move uh, the motors for those lift systems into other patient rooms to allow our staff and patients to be safe during their during their transfers. We also you'll notice the color of the linens on the bed that. That is on purpose. Those aren't dirty sheets. 
Uh, we partner with a local company called Cupron, and they uh, supply these copper-infused linens. Again, they have antimicrobial, antiviral properties, so no uh, better way, no better time to use those linens than during a pandemic. So we're very grateful for that partnership. We also, in the back there, you kind of see that long lounge uh, couch that does fold out into a, into a twin size mattress that allows our family members to spend the night with their loved ones. Just give you another view of the room. So this is, again, the private restroom. There's that sliding barn door to maximize space, allows us really to utilize all the space in the room uh, for, for patients. Hey, Alan, it, it may be yeah. worth noting that um, well before any of us had heard of COVID, we did design eight isolation negative pressure rooms. Um, so they are they are throughout the facility as well. Thanks, Mac. I wanted to talk a minute about a patient interactive platform that we utilize at Shelter Arms Institute. Um, this is a system I used in my previous career at the VA healthcare system, but Get Well Network has been our partner to deliver really a, a kind of next level patient experience for our patients at the Institute. We use this tool really to empower patients to direct their care and to achieve their goals. So just a few things we can do with this system. So you see kind of the screenshot. This is kind of the basic introductory screen that our patients see when they turn their TV on. Uh, they can see their daily therapy schedule, and this is integrated directly into Cerner, our electronic health record. So it's automatically updated, and they can actually see a view of, I think, three days of therapy. So they see today and then plus the next two days, which as many of you know is quite a, a, it's a challenge for patients to keep track of therapy schedules. So it's nice to be able to display that in a very nice way in the room. They can, patients can also provide us real-time feedback. So we're talking about patient experience. We will query them with questions through the GetWell network. And based on their feedback, this system also integrates directly with our um, Outlook system. So emails will be generated directly to the managers or supervisors responsible for those areas uh, based on feedback from patients. Again, it allows us in real time to do uh, service recovery for patients if there's an issue. They can see their medication list, which is obviously very important for patient experience in the healthcare environment, often an area that's confusing for patients. They can order their meals um, and access their digital whiteboard, which allows them to know who their uh, physician, nurse, and therapists are for that day. And clinical staff also can order education and direct it to our patients through the GetWell network. So they order the education in our Cerner health record and it will push the educational videos directly to our patients in the GetWell network. When the patients watch those videos, um, it, it documents it right back into their EHR. So again, from a patient experience standpoint, we uh, diminish the variation of having multiple different providers or clinicians deliver that education so it offers a better experience for our patients. And then, Patient experience outcomes. So for us, as I mentioned, our philosophy is, is great patient outcomes are the best experience. In SAI, we also talk about having a culture of measurement and really trying to measure everything we do. So what are we doing currently from a patient experience outcome measurement standpoint? We've just kicked off our press gainy program. We do not have results yet for that. So, so you know, hopefully we'll have those results soon. I mentioned Get Well Network. So we really want the real time, not the retrospective feedback. So that real time feedback will allow us again, to, if there are any service recovery issues to address them immediately. Um, Matt and Mac mentioned executive rounding. We're spending a lot of time on the units, talking to patients and family members and staff as well. Our program leaders, so we have nurse manager and therapy therapy managers on each of our four units. They're also doing rounding and collecting collecting um, some preliminary data. And our quality team rounds on every new admission within the first 72 hours. So we're collecting that that um, that feedback as well. Uh, what are some of our initial outcome measures look like? So in rehab, you look at community discharge percentage. We're sitting um, significantly above the national regional average. Again, it's a small data set we've just started. And also, I would point out our functional outcome at discharge, which, which is a relative scale, is again significantly higher than the region and the nation. Uh, one, one quote I, I added from a patient who came to uh, the Institute recently 
uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to hear her feedback. She called the Institute a castle and she said she felt like a princess. So it was great to hear the f positive feedback from patients even early on in the process. I see we're at 1230, so hopefully I landed the plane on time. The last slide here, I just want to acknowledge our partners. So JLL was our project management firm. HDR was our architect design firm. Oregon handled the construction. And I also wanted to include, in addition to Sheltering Arms Corporation and VCU, our parent companies, Sheltering Arms Foundation, led by Mac and his team, really have done an outstanding job engaging the community in this project. And for more information, or if you all would like to refer your patients, I listed the referral number in the bottom left-hand corner of the slide. So thank you for your time today, and I'll turn it back over to Abraham. Alan, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks, Mac and Matt, for you guys being with us. Um, we're very proud of all of the hospitals in Virginia, of course, um, but we're especially proud of our newest hospital in Virginia. I think it really is a shining star for all of us, um, for our patients and families to know that such, um, such a wonderful facility is right here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And so we don't have to travel around the country looking for um, state-of-the-art um, physical rehab support and care. We can get it right here in our communities. Um, so at this time, I don't see any questions in the box, but I'm going to ask our colleague, um, Carrie Brady, just to sort of do a, a, her, her normal sort of wrap up um, for us. Um, if members of our audience can stay around for another couple of minutes, we've got a couple of polling questions we would like to um, preview, um, review with you, um, but, um, and then we'll see if there are any other questions um, for our colleague from Shelter Norm. So Carrie Brady, what are your thoughts? Thanks, Abraham, and uh, thanks everybody for a fabulous presentation. As has been the case with all of our year of patient experience presentations, what we consistently see reflected is that they incorporate all four of these essential foundations for success. And today in our polling question, we wanted to focus on a couple of things. One is, are you involved in physical redesign projects in your organization right now? And if so, and I know there's five different answers here, so that's a little bit more complicated than our usual polling question, but if you do have physical redesign projects going on, are you involving both your frontline staff and patients and families or the community in those designs? So we wanted to see what kind of the current status is. It's really important, of course, uh, as was reflected in our presentation today, to involve not only your patients and families and community, but your frontline staff. Because as was commented, it works well practically because the whole team and the community were involved. And that's what makes things work well when you're doing a redesign because it has to work on both sides of that equation. It can't just be beautiful for patients and families, but not functional for the teams that are gonna be operating there. So we wanted to get a sense of how that's going currently in Virginia. And we recognize COVID may be impacting some of these projects, but Abraham, if you can close that out, we'll see where people are with their physical redesign. Um, there are lots of ways to engage your frontline staff and patients and families, but doing the mock-ups that we heard about, as well as those focus groups involving them at all different levels is really important. So, okay, about half of our participants today don't have current physical redesign projects going on. Um, half of the ones that do, are involving frontline staff and patients and families and half have frontline staff, but not patients and families. So that represents an opportunity to engage your patients and families in those initiatives because they will give you a different perspective. I'm gonna share with you an example of that different perspective right now while we do our second polling question, which is about, so for the half of you that don't have, who are on the call today, who do not have ongoing physical redesign projects, there are some similar things that you can do that don't involve physical redesign. And one of the ways that you can do this that taps into both your staff engagement and your patient, family, and community engagement is tapping into the creative talents of your community and of your staff. So we wanted to know if you're doing that. Um, and while you're answering this question, I wanna share with you an example of why it is so important to take these different perspectives into account. Now we saw with the beautiful pictures from Sheltering Arms that in the patient rooms, you have that blue wall that's across from the patient bed. Well, I wanna share with you a, a true story about an organization that went through a redesign and they decided to spruce up their rooms with some paint. 
and they painted one wall of every patient room a color and they spent a lot of time thinking about the colors and what would be healing and all these things and they got great feedback from their staff and from their visitors and they couldn't figure out why this seemed to have no impact on the patient experience at all they just weren't getting any kind of reflection that it meant anything to the patients and it turned out they had painted the wrong wall because they painted the wall behind the patient's bed. So once the patient was in the bed, they were still in a white box because they were looking at three white walls. So from a staff perspective uh, and from a visitor perspective, the rooms looked very nice, um, but otherwise they did not. This is fabulous that 80% of you who are still on the call are collaborating with artists and creative staff members. It's a really simple way that you can set about engaging your team. And we've heard consistently um, across our year of patient experience that staff engagement is an area that you've asked for more support. So tapping into the creative expertise of your team members, of your patients and families in the community is a wonderful way to engage people. Some organizations have art parks where patients can actually pick the artwork that's on display in their room because you can rotate out the art. Um, some have a photo contest for staff or others, and then they put the photos on display in particular hallways and things. So there's lots of different things that you can do. Um, and I know I I'm going to ask the team from Sheltering Arms if they will share a story um, about bird feeders uh, that um, when we had our preparation call, this just really struck me as a really wonderful way of engaging the community. And it's something that stuck out to Abraham when he had the opportunity to visit Sheltering Arms. So. Um, Alan, Mac, or Matt, if one of you wants to, I think, Mac, you're the one who's going to share that, right? Sure, be, be happy to. Um, we had a generous donor over 15, 20 years ago who donated um, several bird houses, bird, those pretty bird houses on a post with the copper roofs. Anyhow, they were at the, at the old hospital, and um, when we talked to that donor about our joint venture with VCU Health and the move um, to build this beautiful new destination facility. They were very excited to hear it and um, offered to completely restore those birdhouses. And so they are here. And we had one, uh, one patient in a very, very challenging situation um, arrive in his room, look at the trees and see the birdhouses. Turns out he was a amateur ornithologist and he immediately felt at home. So who knew that our little birdhouses would have such an impact, but um, patients seem to love them and I think we need to get more of them. <laughs> it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful story and a wonderful way of recognizing that everyone who comes through your doors, whether they're patients, families, donors, members of the community, obviously your, your staff, um, they have talents and skills that they can share. And if you're able to engage them where they feel welcome to share those things, they will create a better environment. And that's better for everyone involved, not just your patients and families. It is our year of patient experience, but you aren't gonna have a wonderful patient experience if you're not creating a wonderful experience for your team as well. So, which you guys exemplified today. So thank you very much. Back to Abraham. Thank you, Carrie. Excellent. Well, I don't see any questions in the box, but I think it probably because you guys did such an excellent job at describing the Sheltering Arm Institute story. Um, we certainly hope that as a result of this presentation, um, more people are aware of, again, the wonderful services that are available to all of us here in the, in the Commonwealth, and that Alan will take you up on your offer to reach out and find out more about um, how they can connect with you all. Um, in regards to our 2020 year of patient experience, um, we ask you to join us next month, um, October 22nd at noon, where we will hear from our colleagues at the Centera Healthcare um, System, and we will be hearing from um, Ms. Jean Marie McGee, their Corporate Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer, about the patient experience improvement efforts underway in the Centera Healthcare System. Um, so without further ado, we appreciate those of you that were able to stay on with us. We hope that you um, in, in, enjoy the rest of your week. Um, and um, certainly take a few minutes to fill out the, the survey that we'll launch at the end of the webinar. And again, thanks to our colleagues at Sheltering Arms for um, presenting to us this morning. Everyone, please have a great day. Thank you, Abraham. Thanks, Thank Abraham. You. Thanks, everybody.